We live in a world locked in a seemingly never-ending war, one where we never see the enemy, where our economy, infrastructure, intelligence, and every facet of our lives is vulnerable every single second. There's no getting off the grid when it comes to the cyber war we are woefully ill-prepared for. We're in it forehead deep, and we, like almost every other nation on the planet, are trying to deal with this new threat. But see, there's the thing. It's not really new at all. It's been going on since the first switch was turned on the Internet. Not long after MIT professor J.C.R. Licklider wrote a series of memos in 1962 discussing a concept he called the Galactic Network. A new book details those beginnings and sheds some needed light on where we truly are in this war. Dark Territory, the Secret History of Cyber War. And we are joined by the author, Fred Kaplan. Fred, thanks so much for being here. And I, I have to tell you that I'm fascinated by all of this, especially when you look at the fact that this has been going on for a long time, which is why when I hear Defense Secretary Ashton Carter recently talk about boosting the cyber war against ISIS and so many others, I think back, how did we get to the point, if we've known this was coming for so long, to where we were so far off the beam and so flat-footed? Well, this has been going on for many years, but, you know, administrations change. People forget or never knew what had gone on in the years before they came to office. Uh, we've actually been doing this offensively just as much as the Russians, the Chinese, and others have been doing to us. Uh, a difference, you know, we, we don't go after their trade secrets or their money uh, because we don't need it. We're, we're ahead of them in those fields, too. But, but we've gotten into their defense networks uh, scoped out their critical infrastructure. It's been an offense-defense race, but it's been obscured uh, in, in the most intense secrecy uh, of any agency in government. With all of the people in government who knew about this over 50 years in writing and researching the book, did you find a time in a specific administration where it seemed as if they were right there on the cusp of getting it and one simple move here and there could have really put us at the forefront before we got to this point? Well, a, a crucial moment, and this is a, kind of an oddball moment, was in 1983, Ronald Reagan watched the movie War Games up at Camp David. And you remember, this was the Matthew Broderick movie where he plays this tech whiz teenager who hacks, unwittingly, hacks into the computer of the North American Air Defense Command, thinks that he's playing a new online game and almost sets off World War III. Reagan watched this movie. He gets back to the White House. There's a meeting on something else with all of his national security staff. At one point, he puts down his index cards, and he says, has anybody seen this movie War Games? Nobody had it. It had just come out. He goes into this lengthy plot description, turns to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and says, General, is, can something like this really happen? The general says, I'll look into that, Mr. President. Comes back a week later, says, Mr. President, the problem is much worse than you think. This leads to the first National Security Decision Directive on, in 1984, 30 years ago, about computer security. But there are a lot of politics gets in the way of what to do about it, of what to implement it, and it, it sort of got forgotten until the next decade when, when cyber attacks on both sides again. This is a very much a two-way street uh, be, began to happen in, in full flush. And I remember the film very well, and i got to tell you, even I hearkened back to it when I read the book here and looked at it. I said, there's, there's got to be a facet in there, because I had friends of mine <laughs> tell me that that's really, that started a tremendous amount of conversation back then. So with about 90 seconds left oh, yeah. to go then here, taking into Ash Carter what he said, your book as well, can we ramp up in time? Or do we have the capacity to catch up to the hackers who always seem to be a step and three steps ahead of us? Well, again, we're ahead of them, too. We, this, this, this is both directions. We, we do it. But, you know, one problem is that everything is connected to the Internet now, and everything that's connected to the Internet is vulnerable. Uh, everybody is now accepting it. Even the Defense Department, their new bu the buzzwords in the Pentagon now are not so much keeping people out, because they're going to get in, but it's detection and resilience. Make sure that you see when they're getting in and make sure that you can repair and rebuild from the damage very quickly. In your opinion, are we being aggressive enough in this war? Uh, there's a lot that's going on. I, one thing that I de detail in this book are some cyber offensive campaigns that, that we waged in uh, both Iraq wars and the war against Milosevic that haven't really been written about before that, that did have uh, that did make a substantial impact on the course of the battle.
And I do want to point out that in the book, you talk a lot about information warfare and you talk about the conflicts yes. in Haiti, Serbia, Syria, the former Soviet republics, Iraq and Iran, all these places where we have been and we still are and we're still fighting a war there and we still have to make sure that we are a step ahead every single day. It is fascinating indeed. The book once again is called Dark Territory, The Secret History of Cyber War. And as we pointed out at the beginning, it's been going on for a lot longer than people will tell us. Learn a little bit more about where it came right. from, where it's going, and not only that, what we can do to really win this war, because it is part of the future of the United States as well, and the world. Fred Kaplan, fascinating book. Thanks so much for joining us. We do appreciate your time. Uh, and make sure that you've also checked your own and make sure you don't have anything on your computer as well. Simple things like that. Stay with us. The Hardline continues.